the rain. Blame the rain. All right. Hopefully this is going to work. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining me. Um, we are here to kind of have a little bit of a chit-chat. I have Monday off because, for some reason, the Army randomly says take a day off. Not that it matters if I get a duty call. Uh, but right now I've got joining me uh, AT2 Productions. Good evening, everyone. And wait a minute. Are, aren't they celebrating Labor Day a week late? No, we had that. This is like the month of days off. So we had the Labor Day weekend. Now we have this random weekend, and this uh, w upcoming weekend is the Korean, I think it's New Year, uh, Chuseok, where, uh. appa where apparently during Chuseok, do not get on the road. It, like, you can stop and barbecue on the side of the freeway. That's how locked up traffic is. So can everybody out in the chat just kind of confirm that you actually were able to hear Jared? In a minute. And then next we got uh, Mr. Hufford, the voice. Well, hello. <laughs> Thank you for joining me today. Always a pleasure. First time I've actually been on your channel. Yeah, I don't do too many live streams. Every live stream I've done so far has just been me because I have a Mac. So if this tanks, it's because I have a Mac. And like I was telling the guys that I just spent $100 on an audio program that if I had a PC would have been free. Well, yeah, but, you know. PC Master Race. Yeah. <laughs> and then we've got Thoughts by Jay Brown. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Doing good. Uh, so the, the purpose of today's video is just to kind of chat a little bit about the, the FE Core fiasco that's been going on. Because all of the strikes that have been happening from FE Core have been baseless, specifically when it comes down to the privacy strikes. Because everything that's been released has been specifically due to public information. So what we're going to kind of do today is just wander around the internet and see where we can find said public information. Um, well, here's a neat trick to do. Um, go to go to the FE Core Inc. channel. All right, let me switch over. And then just start pulling up random videos and go to the descriptions and see what kind of links they have in their descriptions. So, I suppose I should probably share with you guys. Yeah, probably. Uh, minor you, detail. You, you but with that one mouse button, you might not be able to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, give me one fo second, folks. I got to share a screen with the panel members. Uh, screen one, maybe? Not that one. Screen two, maybe? There we go. All right, so well, that, I was actually talking, I was actually talking about the YouTube channel because oh, yeah. the, that will lead to the whole point that they have no basis for a privacy violation. Oh, so do you want to go to the YouTube channel or to FE Core? The, the YouTube channel first. Yeah, the FE Core Inc. YouTube channel. Uh, okay. Uh, Astronomy Live, give me one second, and I will get the link over to you. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Now, did you guys know that FE Core has a backup channel? Yeah. Yes, yes, we did. Because that's the channel they were emailing Red from. Oh, really? So, which video should we go to, Sean? Uh, go ahead and go to the microwave promo second attempt. Because I know it's not on the on the power boat where they you know spend FE Core money to. Rent a power boat. <laughs> <laughs> go to the description. Reality. Okay, go down to the description. Mm -hmm. Show more. Oh, look, there's the FE Core webpage. Go ahead okay. and click on that. So, going through their channel, which invalidates any privacy claims that they have, now, since you've used their channel to go to their page, now go to their About Us section. All right, so if we go to the About Us, now, this is a very professional-looking website. I'll give them that. This does not look like a fly-by-night bunch of flat-earthers threw it together. But the one thing that you will specifically not see anywhere on here is any discussion whatsoever that this is a flat-earth organization. They're a unique group. That, that is <coughs> one of the few truths on this website. <laughs> And then we come down to the staff. 
So I've literally done nothing to target anyone to find names, to determine who they are, or determine their affiliation. I have done absolutely nothing other than click links. Now, bear in mind that Indiana state law requires that when you have a corporation, every member must be listed by name publicly. So by being board, mem board members, they have reneged any right to privacy when it comes to dealing with their corporation, which we are on their corporation's website, which is required to show exactly what they're showing to the public. Now, that doesn't give up full privacy rights on them. It doesn't mean that we can do whatever we want to of who they are. We just need to know who they are and their affiliation with this company that they've made. Correct. We can't sit there and say, okay, because they're on this webpage, we can give out all of their personal phone numbers and all that. That would actually be a privacy violation. Absolutely. But what is on this, but what is on this page is required by law to be publicly disclosed, which means they have zero right to privacy with aspect to this page. And they've been hitting everybody with privacy complaints for displaying what is required by law to be made public. So one of the things that you'll notice about this page, and I know people have uh, talked about this before, but what we're going to do is use the Wayback Machine. If you look at this, uh, their About page, FE Corps is in the process of establishing as a tax-exempt nonprofit organization under U.S. Code 501c3. Um, who has really good knowledge of what a 501c3 is? A non-profitable, non-profit charity organization. So that would be churches, scientific institutions, uh, do, um, do universities fall under that? Not always, but potentially. Okay. Because unfortunately in the U S a lot of higher education institutes actually do operate for profit. Yeah. So if we go back to said Wayback machine, and if you've never used the Wayback Machine, it's really interesting. This is not a 100% archive of the entire internet, but it is random captures of different websites during different parts of their existence. So we're going to go to this specific About Us page. And remember, so far we haven't used any back channels. We haven't used anything spooky. We're just using the internets. So, FE Core's website has, has a history back to 2017. And there's only 17 times that this has been archived. So, let's go to January 30th of 2017. Looks generally the same. And you can see up at the top that this is, that's how you can tell this is not the original website, that this is the Wayback Machine. We go back down to the staff. A oh, <coughs> little bit different here. FE Corps is established as a tax exempt nonprofit organization. So in January of 2018, they were claiming to already have tax exempt status under United States Code. Little bit different than what they're claiming now. Uh, any theories from the panel on why? Because they started off right out of the gate saying that they were accepting donations that would be tax deductible. Now, there, there is a little hiccup to this. Um, a, an individual that I'm hoping to get on the panel, I don't know if he's going to respond in time. Um, let me pull up this screenshot. So this is back channel information. This is from an undisclosed source from someone else. This is not of my doing. But a website called The Main Surveyor has a contact with FE Core. He was able to find their tax ID number and got a copy of their application response from the IRS. So they established themselves in 2017, 17, correct? Yep. So logic would dictate that they established, that shortly after the establishment uh, in the state of Indiana, they would have then applied to federal uh, tax exempt status. Yes. Well, well here, here is their response from the IRS this year, April 17th of 2019. Uh, be in for about up your volume a bit. 
Much quieter. Okay, give me a second. Let me see if I can fix that. That's as loud as I can get it. Dang it. One moment. Trying to fix that, or I could just bring the mic closer. There. Hopefully that'll fix it. Um, so April of 2019 is when they got the response. So at some point before this is when they applied. But what is the, the standard turnaround time for notification for application? I think the IRS has between 30 and 90 days. Yep. So, dear applicant, we received your application for exemption from federal tax income and your user payment or fee payment. During the initial review process, the applications for exemption are separated into two groups. Those that can be processed based on information submitted and those that require additional information to be processed. So either you've given us everything we need or we're going to need something. And the, the IRS at that point makes the determination and notifies you. If you're in, in section one where they don't need anything else, you will be notified within 90 days. And then you will be added to the register of active applicants for... Uh, for tax exempt status. So if they fell under this category, they would be on the list with the IRS. Sean, are they on the list? They are not. And as of April, how many days are we since April 17th? Uh, we're about to hit the five month mark. So that clearly means that they are in category two, meaning the IRS or, needs more paperwork. Or they were rejected. Hmm. <laughs> which is a definite possibility. Now, the biggest thing to me that's a problem is the fact that this response letter is April of this year. That now, means they yep. didn't even apply within a timely manner. Well, I'd like to touch on that as well because Flat Earth Reset is the one that actually kicked off this initial investigation of FE Corps and many, many kudos for his work because he did a lot of the work that I didn't ever have to touch. I just had to verify. Um... Him and Mike got into a big discussion on one of his videos dealing with the expo expose of FE Core early on. We're talking back in 2017, just after they formed. As of December 2017, Mike had responded to one of these comments saying that they've already applied for 501c3 with the IRS. Nothing became of that. On my video that caused all this stuff to go down with my walk around of the FE Core corporate office in heavy air quotes. Um, Mike has said that he had filed for 51C3 back in March of last year. And when they finally show paperwork for an application, it's in 2019. So that means that they have been accepting tax deductible donations for over a year before even applying for federal tax exempt status. Yes. While representing themselves as a tax exempt nonprofit, at least to begin with. So let's go back to that. So we are at the Wayback Machine. So in January of 18, they were claiming tax exempt status. Let's check July. Is established. So July of last year. Wow. Is established. Next hit is September. I think that's where they changed it finally. Is either that one or the one after? The next one isn't until 19. So I, I believe this is the one. Kristen Frost laser beams because Furball gets to come home soon. Thank you for the super chat. 71 days, Kristen. 71 days. I think yeah, I can then, understand you. And then you can stop bitching about the time that Canar <laughs> with the Mars starts. Yeah, I can. Then I just have to, you know convince the wife that I'm going to be able to be gone for a couple hours to do it. So this is September of 18. If he, Oh, is that correct? I thought that's Sep when it was. Oh no, sorry. Yeah. This, the Wayback machine indicator disappeared. So I want to make sure that we're not making false claims. So this is September is, is September. established. September 18, still established. Wow. And then the first hit in 19 is July. No wonder they're so sensitive about people showing this page. Yeah. Isn't public information amazing? 
And thank you very much for joining me, Astronomy Live. Nice to meet you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Glad, glad to be here. All right, come on. July of this year. And I'm doing my best to try and keep an eye on the side chat. I apologize if I'm not responding. Again, I have a Mac that I had to unplug my third monitor, so everything's on two monitors, and there's just too much going on. Oh, July of 19 is in the progress. Okay, while you're on the screen, I'd like to point out something, because this was added in th <laughs> at the same time as well. Look at the bottom of your screen. What does that say? Oh, good, good, good question. Good question. Accept cookies. No, no, don't, don't yet. I want people to no. read what that yep. screen says. This Policy website... regarding cookies. This website uses cookies to improve your experience. We'll assume you're okay with this, but you can opt out if you wish. Um, now, question. question. Oh, hold on, hold on. I don't, I don't want to get this derailed because I have a very specific point to make here. Um, what is the biggest thing that FE Core is using to pull videos down right now? Privacy. Privacy. Privacy complaints. This is the neat thing about this FE Core website. You see, it's hosted in the Netherlands, which is an EU country. Oi, oi. The EU has a very specific law regarding cookies and privacy. Really? Really. And, and, and what does it say? Okay. It is in, let me get the, it's in the Amendments to Directive 2022 EC, Universal Service Directive. Are you share, screen sharing anything, Sean? Not yet, but I'm about to be. Okay, let me switch. Share screen. I'll share screen two. There we go. Make sure I white box you so it shows me. Okay. So, Article 66. Third parties may wish to store information on the equipment of a user or gain access to information already stored for a number of purposes, ranging for the, from the legitimate, such as certain types of cookies, to those involving unwarranted intrusion into the private sphere such as spyware or viruses. It is therefore of paramount importance that users be provided with clear and comprehensive information when engaging in any activity which could result in, the store in such storage or gaining of access. The methods of providing information and offering the right to refuse should be user -friendly, as user-friendly as possible. Exceptions to the obligation to provide information and offer the right to refuse should be limited to those situations where the technical storage or access is strictly necessary for the legitimate purpose of enabling the use of a public service explicitly requested by the subscriber or user, which means they are giving prior consent. They're asking for this cookie to be installed. Where it is technically possible and effective in accordance with the relative provisions of Directive 9546 EC, the user's consent to processing may be expressed by using the appropriate setting of a browser or other application. Do, do, do. The enforcement of these requirements should be made more effective by the way of enhanced powers granted to the relevant national authorities. What this is saying is, if you pull back up their page again, um, verbal. Yep. So uh, one comment, Osmo85 asked, can we go back to the Wayback Machine? Because the, the Wayback wasn't indicating at the top of the page. So here we are. Yep. You can see that it's uh, July of 2019. Uh, just click September, that September 18 okay he wants me to go to the September 18 because that uh for some yeah for some reason wasn't showing the way back at the top again don't, don't want to make, be making false claims so there's January 18 which is showing there was zero change from January 30th, 2018 to that next capture. I clicked on the wrong one. Okay. So September 19th. And it even shows you the, the moment it was captured. See, this jumps to January 18 up here. I don't know if that's indicating... Wait. Because there was zero change to that one. Ah, Every time the okay. Waymac machine does it, it... It takes the snapshot, it compares it to the prior. If there's a difference, then it's indexed. If it's not, it defaults to the prior. Okay. So throughout uh, all of 18, they didn't have any actual changes. Yep. But go back to their um, July one, because that's when they added that cookie. Yep. So 19. 
July 2nd. And that, that cookie is active on their page today, by the way. So we see here that it must be as user friendly with the right to refuse. Um, I have a question. There was the accept button. And then a read more button. Where's the no thank you? There isn't one. There generally isn't, though. So I will defend them yes, on that. I, I've, I've sent, seen a lot of news websites that don't even give you the option. Basically, either accept or don't use our site. Again, uh, but they is, that, still is that a U.S. site or is that a, Europe, or a European Union site? U.S. U.S. Sites. And U.S. site, they, their laws on privacy for cookies is way different than the EU laws. And the reason why I'm bringing up the EU laws is because the website is run by an EU company. Yeah, I'm sharing you again, Sean. Um, well, as Jared just pointed out, there's an accept, but there isn't a reject or deny button, which is required by EU law. They have a read more, which tells you you can disable cookies if you want. But by the time you get to that, the cookie is already installed and has already gone through your history and is currently tracking everything you do until you uninstall the cookie. Disabling the cookies will not allow cookies to be installed. It will not prevent cookies that are already on your machine from doing their job. So FE Core is actively invading every person that goes to their website's privacy according to EU law. So the, the cookies are, are uh, installed before you even hit accept? Yes, um, I've actually tested this. I've actually had the page load up element by element and I've cleared up my entire cookie cache, went directly to FE Core and before that little policy of regarding cookies pop-up comes up, it has already installed three cookies. That's very user-friendly. You didn't even have to do anything. Yeah. Before that pop-up comes up, it comes up actually two steps after the cookies are installed. <laughs> uh, Copernicus Thinker, FE Core can suck a lemon. Thank you very much for the super chat. So, uh, so, yeah. so the people that are worried so much about privacy are very more than willing to invade everybody else's. Oh, they're only worried about their own privacy. So let's look into FE Core just a little bit more. Um, we'll keep the Wayback Machine up for f further purposes in a little bit. But let's go to see what there is about this company in the state of Indiana. Again, public information. There is absolutely nothing private about this. Welcome to indiana.biz. Click here for a support bot. So search for a business. Search for a business entity. Business name. Oh, I'm sorry, yes, I am not a robot. Search. So in the state of Indiana, there are three businesses that have something of that sort. And you can obviously see the one that we're talking about, FE Core. So FE Core was uh, registered to Richard Hummer. There's the address that Sean uh, went and visited for some reason because he's insane. And I think you got the wrong window showing to us. Oh, do I? Oh, uh, I think. Now we see it. Well, you, we see FE Core Inc. domestic. Yeah, now, now we see it. Okay, might just be a minute behind. Okay, so filing history. So the only thing that they've got documented within indiana.biz is their articles of incorporation. So open link in a new tab. That's not going to work. Need to download it. So I just, just click it. Clickety click click. Open with viewer. So this is the paperwork they filed with the state of Indiana to become uh, an incorporated business. So I, Connie Lawson, Secretary of State, hereby certify that the articles of incorporation of the above domestic nonprofit organization have been presented to me at my office, accompanied by the fees prescribed by law, and that the documentation presented conforms to law as prescribed by provisions of the Indiana Nonprofit. Uh, Corporation Act of 1991. Now, this is state nonprofit. Yes. This is state yeah. nonprofit. 
That's not, and to be clear to anyone not in the U.S., that is not the same as being a 501c3 charitable organization. And I know this because I worked for a nonprofit before it became a 501c3, and it was a big deal when it attained its own 501c3 status. What were the changes? Talk to us about that. Um, okay, well, without, uh, well, I guess, I guess, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to say too much without doxing myself, but um, <laughs> basically, it, there, there was a, uh, a, a separate entity that um, acted as a foundation which held a trust fund essentially for the organization but it had to uh, pursue 501c3 status separately from being non we, we had to pursue 501c3 status separately from being non-profit and finally attain that status which meant that any donations to our organization suddenly became tax deductible um, and so that's that's more of a federal level uh, pursuit that that's not the same as saying at, at the state level you are nonprofit not being nonprofit has its own benefits but not the same as as being uh, as being 501c3 where any donations you receive are tax deductible to the donor and of course we don't pay taxes on it because we're 501c3 now being state nonprofit does that exempt them from state taxes yes although I, I think it does I, I should say I think it does because in Florida we at least that we don't have individual income tax here in Florida. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there is for business, but I, I wasn't in the in the you know management department of handling all those numbers or dealing with that. But I'm sure, it, to the extent that there are you know corporate taxes at the state level, we didn't pay anything. I'm sure because we were nonprofit. I'm, I'm yeah. pretty sure about that. Okay, so we'll read through this a little bit more. So this was December of 2017. They became a a, a state nonprofit on December 7th, uh, 2017. <clears throat> and then you can read through before, below the name of the company, the address. Um, FE Core Inc. is organized for exclusive religious, charitable, educational, or scientific purposes within the meaning of Section 501c3 of the IRS Code 1986. So that basically means that state charitable organizations abide by federal law. So they don't have their own specific state different way of looking at nonprofits. So technically, if this does not qualify as a federal nonprofit, would that mean they lose their state nonprofit? Sure. They, they should. It's all in, in the processing of the state attorney general who mm -hmm. would be the one to implement, implement and enforce said removal yeah. and, and other things to potentially even go so far as to include complete uh, dissolvement of the company in question. Apparently there's somebody outside. Yes, yes, we we hear you, Snowball. Snow, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> well, while you're on that, let me go ahead and share something here dealing with the articles that, we, that really got skipped over because there's one page that isn't put as the public forum. Okay. That is actually part of the application process. Give me one second. Let me switch over. And are you, are you screen sharing? Yes. Okay. Now, under requirements, one, nonprofit cor corporations must qualify with the Internal Revenues, Revenue Service and the, the Indiana Department of Revenue. It is strongly suggested you do not complete or file this form before contacting both agencies. This is the first page they got when they started to do their filing for Articles of Incorporation. It wasn't until 2019 that they contacted the IRS. Unless they have an excuse from the IRS that we've been sitting on your application for a year and a half. Yeah, that's not doubtful. Happening. Yeah, there, there would be another memo before that, I would imagine. So the memo that was shown before was just, hey, we got your paperwork. We're looking at it now. Here's what to expect. Yes. So with this, they're identified as a public benefit corporation, which is or organized for a public or charitable purpose. So the only thing that they could kind of shoehorn themselves in there is for a public purpose, meaning scientific advancement. But again, like we saw on their website, there's literally nothing on their website that identifies them as a flat earth organization. They're engineers. And they are taking charities or charitable donations as an engineering company. And the only issue with that is have any of the members of the board proclaimed to be anything other than flat earthers? 
Mm. Uh, how, how far in the titles do you want to go? Because <laughs> Bob Nodell has claimed to be quite a few things. Oh, we're, we're doing that next. We're doing that next. Hey, stop it. <laughs> heard. So the uh, registering agent's name, Rick Hummer. We've got the address. Um, where is it for their um, board members? Right there, Article 5. Okay. Okay, Article 5, if the incorporation will have members, no members. So we've got this, and then we've got this. And the defense that FE Corps has been spouting is <clears throat> that box does not mean um, board members. But if you go to any legal documentation that actually breaks down the Articles of Incorporation, it explicitly states that the boards, the members section, actually talks about your directors and your board of directors. That, yeah. is, ex that is expressly what that's for. And if you say yes, you have to give out the names, addresses, contact information publicly released on another form. So, so while during my first job after getting off active duty in the Navy, I went around to a lot of companies one of them that I went to was a very well-known nonprofit that actually does charitable work. And while I was talking with the point of contact there, I asked him, how does the employment here work? And put quite simply, if you are a paid staff member, you are just that. You are a member of the organization. Volunteers are volunteers. Beneficiaries are beneficiaries. If you are what most people would consider an employee of the nonprofit, you are deemed legally as a member, not not a board member, but a member of the organization. Yeah, which it, is why a lot of them get around the high overhead by having a small actual paid staff and a lot of regular and recurring volunteers. Yeah, and you can see on this page, it specifically says other board members include Rick Hummer, Bob Nodell, Sandor Sikeli, and Jaron Campanella. Well, j just to modify that a bit, um, when FE4 FE was first in incepted, um, the board member list was a lot longer than that and didn't include Jaron. Um, when they finally filed their articles is when Jaron got added on and I think 10 people got removed from the list. Um, I'll get to the full list here in a second because, again, this goes back to credit of Flat Earth Reset because he's the initial person that found all this stuff. He's the one that actually tracked everything down. He did a really good job. Out of curiosity, did the original list include that one person whose name I forget that they kicked off because he decided the Earth was round after all? Yes, yes, it did. <laughs> Who it was that? It absolutely did. Chris Monk Sile, Sile. He was on the board of directors list, initial list, um, until they finally filed their articles. So then uh, I'm going to move on for a second uh, for some more public information. We'll leave this up just in case we need it. Next, let me see. Oh, actually, so with this, um, I think it was on this that said who, yes, so... If you want to become a, a nonprofit, uh, you can have a company help you through that process. And they used Foundation Group Inc. So they paid this company to help them through the entire process. And here is their website. Sadly, they don't, okay. they're a company, and they, so they don't have public information about who their clients are. Go ahead, Sean. Um, FE Core members video published on 919 of 2017 on Mike Cavanaugh's personal channel, which is now a private video. Um, Mike Cavanaugh was listed as president and chairman. Steve Torrance is there. Dr. Zach is there. Um, somebody with a weird name, last name's Metablaus. Adam Carter's there. Bob Nodell's there. Cammy Nodell's there. Anthony Testa Forte. Andre, Andre Carnegie, or whatever his name is. Chris Monk Style. Christian Villa, Vanilla Ba. Acha. Dave Marsh. Durr Holiday. Gary John. Iru, which is on Globusters now. Yep. Um, Karen Karen B. Pilot LX, Robert D. Scott, Richard at Richard uh, Richard Abin, Rick Hummer, Robert Natua, 
and Sandor. That was the that was the initial board of directors. When they released is um, when they finally did their articles, uh, meet your staff or meet our staff, i.e. your team as of 11, 13, 17 on FE Core's About Us page. It was just the list you have there. So, yeah, a lot of people got booted or decided they didn't want to get involved with it because they, I'm guessing they realized how much they're going to get busted eventually. <laughs> yeah. And Janny's got a comment in the chat that uh, the front page asks people to become members of FE Core, and you can do that by paying. By paying, yeah. Oh, and, which, and funny, they... Which Funny, they are not that, a flat earth organization, and yet we've had two notable members of our community here try to gain membership. Yes, um, Gary Natchik was the first. He he tried three separate times, was rejected every single time, and eventually told by Mike that he's just not welcome here because he's, a, he's not a flat earther. Yeah, um, I got that message up right now. So this is the initial response to George. Um... FE Core just sent a full refund for $150 for your purchase. If you have any questions about this refund, please contact FE Core. The refund will go to your PayPal. So George responded and said, hey, I want to be a member. Why aren't you taking my money? And the response was, last warning, George. We are not want you are not wanted here, and the next time you try this, uh, we will report you to the authorities for harassment. Yes, it's so harassing to try to give people money. Oh, please harass me. It's so terrible. And, and the newest person who's been de denied by FE Core for membership by paying them $150 is Sly Sparkane. <laughs> <laughs> Sly Sparkane oh. tried to send the money oh. three times. I wonder if they would re reject me. I'm guessing they would. Oh, I'm, I'm sure they would. I could probably get in there. I'm small enough. Nobody knows who I am. Um, Trip and Fool, you are correct. Some states only require a P.O. box for location for nonprofits. Indiana is not one of those states. Yeah, they, if I remember right, they specifically have uh, provisions that you have to have a physical storefront. Yes, you have to have an office that people can go to during regular business hours. And if, let's hash this out uh, mentally, uh, what, what the purpose for that is. Uh, to me, the, the, the reason would be is if you're a nonprofit and you are soliciting money people for your purpose – the people that are giving you money have the right to see what their money is being used for and to talk to someone about what that money is being used for. Yep. Well, here's, here's a bit of thing that you can do on your own. Just do a search on, and I quote, who is a, or who is a nonprofit accountable to? 100% of the time, it will always say it is first and foremost accountable to the public. Then it is accountable to the law after that. Zero so yes, nonprofit... Yeah, zero one three two one three two. Uh, I'm gonna be reporting you. Thank you for the harassment. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like what? <laughs> yeah. So it, if you're paying a company that's supposed to be doing a public service, you have a right to know what your money's being used for. Absolutely, you have a right. And that's why these board members need to have who they are and a way to contact them public, because if you're giving them money out of your pocket to do a supposed good purpose, you have a right. The, the government has determined that you have a right to know what your money's being used for. And Indiana is really strict on that. They, they, because many years back, they actually had a huge problem in Indiana with um, people doing false front businesses that would only have a mailing address where they would, you know, send their mail to some random mm -hmm. Joe's house or an even abandoned houses at some points or, or maybe just, a so church. They can, just so they can get mail that was intended for their business, but their business didn't actually exist. So Indiana changed the laws to say, you must have a physical office. It's called a principal office where you do your business. And this reminds me of, and sorry, go ahead, this reminds me of that Seinfeld episode where Kramer has a quote unquote business out of his apartment. And, uh, at some point they say, well, all we've been able to ascertain so far is you have an apartment, which may or may not contain a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> so if we go back to the, the, the company that helped them, if I remember, right. Um, state by state guide. So again, we want to know the law. We don't want to be making basis claims on things that can and can't be done. So Foundation Group will help you walk through this. 
and Copernicus Thinker, uh, $2 super chat for fecore.org, registered via GoDaddy, and oft porn re uh, registry. Yeah, registered through GoDaddy, their, their actual host is in the Netherlands. So for Indiana, and I'm not going to go through all this because this is a lot, of, a lot of stuff. So formation meeting, you got to have a meeting uh, with your, uh, to identify how, what, what your, the purpose of your organization is. So uh, it is at this initial meeting that the initial bo uh, board of directors is installed and officers titles determined, minutes are kept, then you need to get a ID number, then you need to be incorporated in the state of Indiana. So uh, Jen Morgan, how did you get the church's address? Who owns the building? So the church's address is on the FE Core webpage. It's on the FE Core webpage and it's on the, the application. And do you, do you remember who owns the building? Uh, some guy named Tim. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. I've done some YouTube searching for uh, North Liberty, Indiana, and they seem to have a lot of political drama there for a town of like 1,800 yes. people. Yes, they do. Um, because the guy that actually owns the building is on the um, Chamber of Commerce. Ah. Uh -huh. So step three, you need to be incorporated within the state of Indiana. Uh, foundation Group Service, yes, they will help you do that. And you can see that from their website. Then you need to establish your bylaws. Bylaws are the rules used by the officers and directors to govern the organization. Indiana does not require a copy of the bylaws to be filled, filed with the state. Regardless of filing requirement, their creation is part of the formation process and is required by law. So if you are a member of FE Corps and you are one of those paid servants, you should be able to request what their bylaws are. Because even if they are not filed with the state, they're required to have bylaws. Um, Thomas English is the guy that owns the building okay. and, and, both, and both companies that are there, Shamrock Holdings and, um, oh, it's the tool and die thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So again, foundation group will help you with this. The next step is federal tax exemption. This is the process that they are in right now. A year later, two, two years later. So there's two different ways to file the file this. You can do an easy form or you can do a full form, uh, $600 if you're doing the no, normal full form, which they said somewhere in here is between 50 and 100 pages long. So that's not something your average person can do, which is why you hire someone and foundation group service. Yes, they provide this service. I would love to have this group have public <coughs> records to see what exactly happened. But they're a private organization. They have, no right, they have no requirement to disclose who they have assisted in this process. It would be very interesting if they got to this phase and this company went, eh, I don't think you're going to meet this. You're going to have to do it on your own. Well, was Foundation Group anywhere on their little form that Mike was happy enough to show everybody? Which one? Which form? The one they got from the IRS. Uh, let me see. No, I don't believe it was. Because that would make a whole lot of sense. That, this, that would actually be a... The one that I was talking to you about? Or a yep. different, different form? No, this, that's not on here. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, would... I, I would think then, yeah, in the two block where it's FE Core Inc., it would probably be Care Of Foundation Group. Yeah. That's what I would think. This letter should have gone to FE Corps and to Foundation Group. Right. If, so if Foundation were, if, Group was helping. And so if Foundation Group was currently handling this case, then their their name would be on there somewhere. Uh, $10 super chat from John Rapp. I'm not going to read that message for 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Harassment and a threat. I'm going to hold my breath until you read this. <gasps> There you go. I've saved a life today. <laughs> Not too bad there's like a 30 second delay between the stream and what you see in chat. <laughs> <laughs> so then after that, you have to file state tax exemption status. So that would mean that this form here. Nope, not that one. This doesn't grant you state exemption. Well, that that's why I pointed out the um, actual application form where it says that you should contact the IRS 
and the state, or you need to contact both the Internal Revenue Service and the Indiana Department of Revenue yeah. before you file the form. Yeah. Which they did not do. Jeannie has a uh, point. The place the form was sent to is an address. Is the address of the person who filed it? It's not necessarily the, the address form. Yeah, it's not the address uh, where the person filed it. That's the address of the corporation. So, like, if you own a company, you're generally wouldn't be getting at uh, e mail at your yeah, house. No, no. You'd be getting at at the storefront, which is the thing that we were talking about earlier. That in Indiana, you're required to actually have a person store place where someone can come and talk to you, not just receive mail. Right, and that's that's why I was reading the uh, Janie's comment. So yeah. that way, we can point it out that it is actually the um, business location, not an actual like yeah. person's home address or something. Yeah. Uh, so state exemption, and then then you can start soliciting charitable uh, or charitable solicitation registration. So this is different states have different requirements. If you have to be registered as a charity, this Indiana does not require. Uh, so you can see most states require nonprofit organizations to register, typically administered by the uh, Attorney General's office. Some states don't. Indiana does not have a charitable solicitation regist registry requirement, so they are not required. Uh, which is which is why they specifically chose Indiana to make their base of operations, because there's only there's only a handful of states that do it, and Delaware and Indiana are pretty similar, but Indiana is a little bit more lenient when it comes to forming a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. Indiana is the easiest place to form a nonprofit as long as you follow the rules. So then sales tax exemption, uh, I don't believe FE Core has anything for sale right now other than the charitable donations. Um, they're selling memberships. But is, is, is that sales tax? Would that be <laughs> sales tax uh, applicable? Well, it is a service, so it service. could be. Yeah. yeah. John Rapp, $5 Super Chat. Whoa, your timing was perfect. Uh, proper time zones, you Merkins. America. Merk. So that is the, uh, the process that this group that helped them through. But again, as we just learned, they are on this form. They are not on this form. Oh, wait, no. Head it the other way. I need to separate these out. They are on this form. They are not on this form. Yeah, so that tells me that the person that filed it, which was supposed to be the foundation group, because Mike's even made it very clear to me that the foundation group was the one that was actually doing all the filing to the IRS, it would have been mailed to the foundation group, and the foundation group would have forwarded it to FE Core. So, Jen Morgan, uh, but many companies use that address. If there are many companies using it, isn't that a sort of fraud as well uh, on the landlord's part? I wouldn't necessarily say that, because just think of a, a business building where you've got multiple places it is different addresses so oh, actually that's that's an interesting point so if we had a a business building where you were renting a room in a building and you're putting one secretary there to answer the phones you would have 101 south maple street suite five suite well right the the indiana statute is that if there's more than one company um occupying a building they have to have it clearly stated what all companies are there okay. with their work with their operating hours there is no such thing. There is the tool and die company. Mm -hmm. There is the Shamrock Holdings. And then there's the paper sign about the gym. There is nothing about FE Core in the building, which is why I raised a big stink about it, because mm -hmm. Indiana requires it if you have more than one company in a building. So, Sean, I, I have this question for you. I'm assuming that the owner of the building is aware that FE Core is using them as an address, because obviously they're getting there. Oh, very much. Very much. Um, Rick Hummer and Thomas are actually very good friends. <laughs> Uh, it almost so seems this... like some of the arguments that are happening on, online are almost sovereign citizen-ish. I might be way out in left field, but it seems like those are the confrontations. I, I, think, that's a, I think that's a left field. Okay. I think that's a, I think that's a left field thing Okay, as far as FE Core goes. Well, I'm just talking the town itself. Oh, well, yeah. Um, I, I know that they're very um, shady when it comes to town hall meetings. <laughs> I'll just say that. They always have law enforcement present. Yes. Because anybody who says something against specific people, they will actually have escorted out under threat of arrest. Whether, no matter how nice they're saying it, if they're saying something publicly uh, that detracts on somebody, they'll kick them out of the town hall meeting. Um, Astronomy Live, your screen sharing. Do you want me to show the public? You got something to show? 
Oh, no, well, I just had this up for fun. I mean, this is the... People have probably already seen this. This was on uh, Red's channel. This is the screenshot of the email I sent YouTube in reply to the privacy complaint. And the reply I received from YouTube a day later at the end of the... And this was a little after that 48-hour period where you have a chance to either remove the video, alter the video, or otherwise hide the information being complained about, which I didn't lift a finger on my video, okay? I didn't blur anything. I didn't hide anything. I just left it all out in the open and detailed to them in, any, in this email the, the situation, at, at, to the best of my knowledge at the time. And uh, the to TLDR is that uh, they came back and said, we've reviewed the information and we've decided that it is not a violation of our privacy guidelines, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, I detailed for them, first of all, that it's FE Core making the complaint, which is, and I linked to the channel, and then I, I detailed that this came off their website, which they linked to in their video, and I provided an example of a video which links to their website. Uh, and I, I sort of slipped it in there that I'm aware of how the YouTube privacy complaint form is structured, that it asks specifically, has this content been copied from your own channel or video? And, uh, and that should have been answered in the affirmative because it was copied from a link they provide multiple times on their channel and videos. Uh, if they had checked yes, and I've, I've secretly, between us, I've tested <laughs> this, if you check yes and you and you try to complain about somebody posting your private information, if you check yes to that question, it's an automatic rejection. You immediately receive an email saying, we could not find any private information in your complaint because you're admitting you provided it. It's public information that you personally provided through your channel. It's, it's one thing, and, and I hear this argument all the time, well, it's public information, it's public information. And you could say that about certain things about me. Florida, for example, is a state that is very open with public documents. Virtually everything is a public document, police reports, housing information, all that stuff is public documents as far as Florida is concerned. So it's not hard for somebody who doxes me if they get my name to find public documents that give my address, my phone number, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. It's very easy to get that information on me, unfortunately. However, just because it's a public document doesn't mean you can just go post it to YouTube and dox someone who is not providing <laughs> their name or their information to you through their YouTube channel. I don't provide my name to you through my YouTube channel. But uh, just so just because it's a public document doesn't mean anything as far as YouTube's personal policies are concerned. However, if you provide it through your channel or your videos, then it's fair game. You, you can't make a privacy complaint about things that you have provided. So, for example, Sean Huffer can't complain if someone uses his name or his face. I can't mm -hmm. complain if someone uses my face. I do show my face on my channel. I don't, I don't make complaints about that. Um, so, anyway, the basically, and I, and I said, you know, based on the fact that FE Core has provided this information on their channel, they should have said yes to this question. It should have resulted in an automatic rejection. They are abusing the privacy complaint process. And, oh, by the way, they've already successfully struck Slight Sparkane, and I know they've uh, filed complaints against Red's Rhetoric and here are their channels. Can you please go do something about that as well? Mm -hmm. um, they didn't say anything in regards to that, but they really ought to reverse their decision against Slay Sparkane, in my opinion, for sure. Uh, but they did reply to my email at the end of the, the period and say, yes, we've reviewed the complaint and decided that it is accepted from removal based on our privacy guidelines, which I don't know if that, I, I'm sure that's a standardized form. However, the way it's worded there suggests it's the kind of standardized form that they reserve for situations like this, where the information is might otherwise be considered private, but because they provided it through their YouTube channel, it's accepted from the rules. Mm -hmm. So content does not violate our policies and, and will remain on the site. Thank, we thank you for using YouTube. So yeah, that was great news for me. Total victory over their privacy complaint. And so anyone else, if you get a privacy complaint for this video, for example, just write them an email like this and reply to that complaint mm -hmm. and just send in reply to that complaint email in detail. This came from their website. They linked to it on their channel. They should have answered yes to this question on the privacy form. Clearly they haven't answered yes, but this did come from their channel. Please uh, rescind this, you know, or, or um, uh, please take action against this. This is not a, a proper use of the privacy complaint process. So I can speak to this personally. Back in February, I had a doxing video come out on me after a little spat with P. Mars. Um, I pissed him off because he's an idiot and he made some baseless, horrendous claims about Fight the Flat Earth. 
and uh, let me switch screens. After releasing a video that made him look like a horrible human being, which he is, uh, someone else, clearly not yeah, connected yeah. with P Mars, clearly not P Mars, uh, did a video about me and Bob the Science Guy, and they had found my personal YouTube page. And then with the information that was on my personal YouTube page, they had went out and found public documents that had my name, my address, pictures of the house, all that kind of stuff, and put a full video out about all of it. And none of that was information that I had put out on my account. It was on my personal account. And it took about a day after I filed the, the privacy complaint for the video to be taken down. Yeah, by by standardized rules, they they give the person who put up the private information forty eight hours to do something about it, which to me feels like a very long time. If your personal information is out there and they're showing your house, your address, and stuff, you don't want that stuff staying up there for forty eight hours. So I feel like that's really generous. Yeah, to give the, the person who's doing that forty eight hours, and then then they will review it and make a decision as to whether or not it was a violation of their policies. Um, and I've had, I've had, obviously, I've had videos trying to dox me and stuff. The latest one I saw was horrible to me because it failed in a way. It successfully doxed my parents, for example, and friends of mine. Um, their address, their phone number, it never actually hit me. But, I mean, that's way over the line. Not only going after me, going after my friends and family. I'm sorry, that's horrific. I mean, that's just, there's no excuse for that whatsoever. No matter how much you hate me. Why would you do that to my friends and family just because you have problems with me? Fortunately, the video got reported not because it not only hit me, it, it also docked some other people, and mm -hmm. they had already reported it before I even had a chance to see it, and it's already been taken off of YouTube. So good yeah. news there. But. What was frustrating for me is that it was during a two-week period that I was back home from Korea visiting my family, and that's when all of this went down, and that's when I released the video. So halfway through while I was home is when the doxing video came out, and then a week later I had to leave home and leave my family and kids with this doxing oh, video man. out there. Well, let me address something in the chat real quick because this is actually kind of funny. Um, there's a user called, where is that? Shanna Living Waters says, someone should contact Astronomy Live since he lost. Shanna, the person you just heard talking was Astronomy Live talking about how the privacy complaint was rejected by YouTube. So I don't know where you're getting your information from. Patently false. Yeah, I, I want I I think some people heard about the fact that I received a privacy complaint and thought that they had already taken the video down, but they hadn't. They never actually took the video down. There, there was that 48 hour period where people were hearing the news that I had received the complaint. Some people misinterpret that to mean that I received a strike where the video came down. Then that, that didn't happen. It was still in that 48 hour period where I have a chance to do something about it. And then they review it when they reviewed it. Um, I don't know, probably uh, within 12 hours of that 48 hour period having elapsed that morning, I received the email saying that we reviewed the complaint in response to my email, which I sent in from the complaint. And they said, yeah, it's accepted from our policies and we are not taking down your video. So no, they never took down my video. So again, I urge people if they receive an initial complaint, reply to that complaint, detail the information. And um, Red's Rhetoric can also help you get in touch with YouTube. There's this whole, and I, I couldn't tell you how I did it. Red walked me through the process of getting an email out to YouTube support staff. To be honest, they weren't terribly helpful. Uh, the general support staff, they, they initially replied to me uh, thinking that my complaint was about a copyright strike when I made it very clear in my initial email to them that it was about a privacy, com privacy complaint. Um, and when they, when I finally made the situation clear to them, they replied again and said, well, okay, reply to the email that they sent you through the privacy complaint process. Cause that's a separate department. We don't handle that. So my advice is to people reply to the email that came in on the privacy complaint, detail the information that it is not private information that it was linked to through their YouTube channel. And they ought to re reach the same conclusion then that they reached for me. So uh, Sheena Living Waters is correcting herself and saying that she meant main surveyor and not you. So uh, I, I know that he had one of his videos struck. I don't know if it stuck. I haven't been back to his page to see if it stuck. Uh, I know that I was able to get that screenshot from his, his uh, video four days, I think, after it had been out, if not more. So his video is still up. But if we take a little side tangent on where these people are getting their information from, this is... Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Cosmic questions. 
I am big enough to care about um, main surveyor. That's why he, that's why we're trying to get him in here. Yep. Ian Furball already reached out. I just didn't want to cover his topics unless he came in. Yep. So where a lot of these people are probably getting their information from is from the the flatter side of the community. This is a Nathan Oakley chat from a week and a half ago or so where Anthony Riley kind of steps on his crank a little bit. And we'll listen to this for a minute. Brenda, she, she can't concede that because of the reasons you've just given. There is no there's no space for gravity. We've got no audio. So oh, no. that's why. Uh, the stream might. Damn, damn it. The, damn it, the Sean. Um, the stream might. The stream there's might. another I'm thing the I want to update people on. Um, there's been a death in the community. Uh, and it's not actually happened yet, but it's about to happen. It's still catching so up. Whilst we're all gathered here, we might as well take a moment to remember our friend, Sly Sparkane. He's about to fall to grief. Can the stream pick up the Probably audio? His channel the is still live. Yeah, the stream's picking However, up. However, okay. in the next few hours, it won't Carry be. On. So let's take a moment to remember Sly Sparkane, a baller that knows it's not a ball, but yeah, tells his audience Yeah, they could it hear it. We couldn't, okay. which was oh. merciful. All right, you're going to have to give us some more details on that, which means in three hours, his channel won't be a channel anymore. He's currently sat on two um, strikes. I'm not sure if the community strikes or copyright strikes, but he's got two cop two. I'll just call them copyright strikes. It might not be. It might be the other one. But um, oh, he's, in, he's got involved. A name that he's I got involved in a war with um, Fe Core because um, Fe Core have took issue with something that he said or several things that he said and done, and um, they've basically said, "No, you're out of line. Pack it in because blah blah blah." I don't know the ins and outs of it. I'm not familiar with the ins and outs of it. If you want to check it out before his channel dies, go and look at his version of events on his channel. Um, but basically, they've got involved in a spat, and um, well, uh, he's going to claim victim status because of false flagging. But Effie Cora saying, "You're taking the piss. There are limits to being a dick." And regardless of how it goes, um, I'm, not, I'm just reporting the facts that Sly is about to die. So, my condolences to Sly's family, Geo Streber, Sean Hufford, Red's Rhetoric. We will all we will all remember Sly Sparking. So with that, they, they go on a little bit. And I, ironically, Nathan actually defends and says that he does not want his channel to die because he's a content creator. He's someone who does things. But Anthony goes back and forth of, I don't really know what's going on. And I just got off the phone with Mike. So well, which is it, Tony? In, in this clip, you know, he talked about how he's talked to Mike and Effie Course trying to stay out of it. But... Effie Course started it. But well, I'm getting to that because right after this show was over, Anthony actually let the show before it ended and went over to Jose's channel. And somebody cornered him about how he knows all the information he does if, you know, Effie Core is trying to stay out of it. And he admitted to talking to Geostriber, or when he was talking to Geostriber, that he had already talked to Mike and that he'd um, known about the seven strikes that were coming towards Sly, which was the exact number. Um, you want me to play and it? And he, he repeated that in Jose's. All right. So before he talked to Nathan on his show, he he admits on Jose that he had already talked to Mike and found out that he was putting all these strikes towards He say, when are the globe zombies so he are going to apologize to Q? Right? Go ahead. Sleeping Warrior, uh, Slice Park Kane. So there was, uh, I heard a little bit of Nathan, like five minutes, and there was something about some copyright strikes, Slice Park Kane losing his channel. What's going on? Someone's, I don't. He's picked a fight with the uh, Fe Core over something. He's he's alleging fraudulent stuff to do with how to be or something. I'm not. I'm not quite sure. I've not watched the videos. I just know that um, it's the usual kind of nonsense. And from 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 my perspective, it's kind of it's it's back and forth. It's it's just drama. Um, I don't know. I've not. I don't really know the arguments. I'm not going to try and present the arguments because I'd butcher it. Um, but all, what happened it, was uh, Mike Cavanaugh from FE Core directed um, everybody who was listening to go copyright strike uh, Slice Park Games channel. Okay, so whatever's happened, he's ended up getting, um, well, he's got numerous issues um, in a minute. He's got two copyright strikes that have stuck, but he's got several that are pending. And they may not be copyright strikes, they may be um, community guideline strikes, but he's got several that are lined up. And his channel looks, looks, is looking like it's gonna go in the next few hours. So we might have to start a new channel. He's confirmed two of the copyright strikes as well. Well, that is kind of a scummy move. I don't know the ins and outs of it. I agree, generally. I think that it's probably dick swinging and like... So if he doesn't agree with it, why is he gloating about it? 
because he's a disingenuous twat. And in here, he admits that he'd just gotten off the phone with Mike. So, one other thing with, with Anthony. Uh, anybody who's familiar with my channel knows that um, I interviewed him for three hours a couple weeks ago. And it was a very cordial conversation. Uh, we had pleasant. It, it was mind-numbing as it was. Um, we continued talking afterwards, and he continued spouting his side, and I rebutted. But it was cordial, and then all the FE core nonsense came out. And I, I am a person of ethics, I am a person of morals, and I felt that he was on the side of, because of these, that he was on the side of FE core. So as I was messaging him on Skype, I sent him this. And if you've seen my, uh, the last interview, honestly, man, I enjoy chatting with you and trying to challenge each other's beliefs. But if you are involved with the unethical behavior of FE core, then we have nothing more to talk about. I'll associate with someone that I disagree with, but not someone that is involved in a blatant, unethical, and fraudulent behavior claiming other people's content is their own. That, no, was, a, that was my message I'm, to him to try and start a conversation. And you see how it ended. Now, I'm going to assume that when you're talking about um, claiming other people's content is your own is the fact that Res Rhetoric got a copyright strike for using my video. Yes, that was the before. purpose of this. So... After this message, you can see his response, and then he blocked me, I learned this today, on, uh, on Skype. Today, <laughs> yeah, so he, and he told me that. So uh, I was watching uh, Ranty's channel. He's on there, and he brings up the Southern Star bullshit that him and I talked about. We, we developed an experiment to determine Southern Stars. And in the week after the interview, I sent him the protocol for this four times. Four times asking him, hey, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? Every time I sent him the protocol, he completely ignored it and like I didn't even send it. And then he went back to whatever his argument was. So today he's talking about Southern Stars again on, Ranty, or on Riley's cha yeah, Ranty's channel. And I messaged like, hey, uh, Sleepy, what about the, the challenge that or the, the experiment that we discussed? So Ranty invites me on and Riley loses his mind about me being there saying that I was being a dick to him. He's like, yeah, we were chatting, and then he became a dick about FE Core, so I became a dick and I blocked him. So, Ranty, this, either he's a dick here or I'm a dick here. I'm not going to stay. And I even said, but I've said to you the protocol four times. Yeah, but then you were, you were a dick, so I didn't respond, and I blocked you. I would like everybody in the chat, please tell me, is this message me being a dick? No. Not, not even, even close. close. That's just you saying if you're... If you're associated with these people that are doing fraud and you're complicit with it, then I don't want to. Then I don't want to do with somebody like that. And he just kind of admits that he is by saying, "Okay, see you around." Yeah, that's the way yeah. I take. I sent a similar. I didn't send it this like this to uh, to Ranty. I said, "Hey, what's up with all of these strikes that are coming from Fe Core?" And Ranty's response was, oh, "I'm not. I don't know anything about that. Sorry, man." Put it, putting myself in his shoes, if if somebody said something like that to me that they felt you know read or Sean or somebody was doing something fraudulent to them. Uh, and, you know, strike, if Red or Sean or somebody I knew was filing strikes against someone's channel and somebody would say, hey, if you're involved with this, I don't want to be associated with you. I, my first reaction would be, look, I'm not the one doing that. I have nothing to do with what's going on there. Don't, don't lump me in with these people, you know. And that was and, the and, response I was hoping for. Right. To continue the conversation. But I get that and a block. Oh, look who's in the chat. Hey, Red. No, Red, I'm not saying you're actually fine. strikes against people. I'm just like, hypothetically, you know, if I was in, if, if, if the situation, if the shoe was on the other foot and I was in, in Riley's position here where associates or friends of mine were filing copyright and privacy strikes to try to get someone's channel taken down, would I react this way to being, you know, associated with them? Yeah, this isn't so, how I would respond. Well, first of all, since since Red has been a victim of this situation as well, should he not be here? Uh, as long as he keeps his camera off. Well, you don't got to write that. His camera, he tries to turn his camera on, it's going to break. So that's true. Yeah, yeah. Can you? Why don't you guys send him the link? Doing it now. Cool. There you go, Red. Get your ass in here. Now, boy. <laughs> So one, I'm gonna. I haven't done this. This is this is an experiment uh, we're doing live together. Because the question I had was, with this Indiana Biz website, it's got the history of filings and things like that. 
I don't know if this should include like tax filings and things of that nature or not. Well, I, it should. In, I, actually, I don't know, but I know that the 990, you know, FE Corps is trying to say that we don't have to do that until we're 501c3. Mm -hmm. A form 990, every business has to submit every year. Mm -hmm. It's their standard tax filing. It has nothing to do with the, whether or not they're um, 501c3 or what or not. Mm -hmm. Every so, company has to file a 990, and pretty much every company out there is public on the IRS's site. So I'm on the Indiana Biz website. The question is, would it be on here if you're a historic business? I haven't done this. I might be wrong. Do you guys think that form would be listed here? Uh, the tax form, uh, only if it is, it, it would only be for other public nonprofits. So, oh crap! I need a name. It's not going to be for for Life Corps. That's not a nonprofit. I need a name for a nonprofit. Because I wanted to see if the filing would be in here for that um, company. Uh, Red Cross, they got they got chapters in every state, I think. Uh, return to search. Shit, I can I, actually screw that church. Right here, he's muted, but he's here. All right, so we've got uh, make sure I'm showing everybody. Yep, we've got a shitload of churches. Um, let's just pick the top one. Church of Jesus Enterprise Inc. This was created in 2017. Let's see the filing history. Now, now something. Look at it. Look at the principal information down there. Go back. Yep. You look missing on every how, page. Look at how much information there is. Oh, the board members. Yeah. The board members. Because they are required by law to be listed, FE Core. So we go filing history, and we've got articles of incorporation, articles of amendment, and business entity report. Ooh, business entity report. Yep, that is an annual thing, too. Open. Approved and filed, Connie Lawson. Name of principles, year filed, effective date, registered no, office. Notice. Hold up, go back up. Yep. Go to principal office address. That is where their actual walk-in office is. Yep. Registering office address. So that's going to be probably the whoever uh, runs the church. Registered agent, yeah. Yep. Members of the board. So this is an annual requirement for recertification. The signatories represent that the registered agent name in the application has consented to the appointment of registered agent, the witnesses thereof. Okay, let's go back to a different one. Let's see if we can find one that's a little older. Hey, Red, you're still muted. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Your keyboard isn't angry enough, BM. I'm not typing. That's mine. Oh. <laughs> hey, hey, Sorry. let's go. Let's go check out that church. That church. <laughs> that church. Oh, I love it. Oh, it dates back to 2003. All right, filing history. Oh, administration of dissolution. See, now they don't have annual reports. Which would probably be why they were dissolved. Could be. All um, right. Christopher Man, about the answer to both of those is no. What was the question? As far as gay or trans. Oh. Ooh, ooh, I got one for you. I got one for you. Yeah. Look up Indiana Astronomical Society. The ass? <laughs> Indiana Astronomical Society. You're going to ask me to fucking spell a long word like that? Yes. Uh, we'll just go astronomical, and hopefully I spelled it right. Yes, you did. I don't see an Indiana one. Uh, there's one that comes up for oh, me. Oh, yeah, 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 there is. Yep. Okay. And filing history. Created in 1959. Wow. So filing history. See, so, you know, business entity report, 95, 96, 97. Annually. Annually. 99. 2000, 2001. 
oh, application for reinstatement in 95, and then business entity reports all the way through. Yeah. Is there something missing there for FE Core? Oh, just slightly. <laughs> and same report right there. Basically recertifying every year that, yes, this is who we still are. Our board members haven't changed. Or if they have, this yep. is who the current board is. Yeah, so FE Core is not even listing their principal officers. Because then, know, they the don't, then they don't have to, they don't have to do anything if it changes. But a, but a global a global organization in Indiana definitely is following. Ah, uh, I see what you did there. Yeah, yeah. So then let's FE Core again. Let's ah. Uh. There should at least be one entry in here for uh, ninety eight. And there should be an or eighteen. Um, or that, that's what I meant. Eighteen. Yep, 18. there should be one in here for eighteen. And there should be a list of principals mm -hmm. and or members of the board. And they have none of it. And the current entity due date is this year. End of the year. Uh, Which should be the report for 2018. At, at the least. If they do it. If they do it. So then yep. the next question is the whole federal... And Sean and I talked about this a little earlier. So let's go to the IRS. Now, do you remember where this is? Oh, a uh, user may download a complete list. Yeah, uh, don't do that because it will take you hours to download. <laughs> oh, no, it was, it, for me, it was pretty quick. For the full list? Yeah. Open. Okay, it was like 132 gigs on mine when I tried to download it. Yeah, all right, open up. Extracting. He's oh, got 5G. I'm in uh, It's a text file. So, so Tau, said, Tau said he, Alpha said, I've been watching old Hangouts when FE Core was announced. They said two to three times that they used the services of a third party to ensure that they become a non-profit organization. Heard of it? Uh, actually, Tau, we went over that yep. probably, what, 25 minutes ago now? Yep. Okay, so then, well, a Tau, right there. This is the company that they used. So this is the company that they used that is on this form when they filed for the state, but it is not on the response form when the IRS said we're reviewing your paperwork, which the assumption can be made logically that maybe that company is not helping them with the federal not anymore, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the list I get. It's just a text file. So then FE Core. Uh, Life, Fork, uh, Life Core Foundation. Life yeah, Core Ministries. Coming. And that's it. And Sean. Yeah, we're not seeing, we're not seeing any of that. Oh, no? Yeah, we're still seeing the tax, tax exempt organization page from the IRS. Oh, it's coming. Now, now we got it. Yep. So, Sean, once their application has been received, is it your uh, be uh, belief that they're added to this list as soon as they apply? Yeah, they'll get, they'll be added to the list under the applied status. It'll go applied, then reviewed, and then either accepted or denied. So... Then the next one thing that Sean mentioned a while ago, we've got all the, the principal members of here. And the one that we know has fudged his history is good old Bob Nodell. So if we go to the Flat Earth, no, we'll go to this one, this page, conference from 2018, the About Bob Knodel. Bob's background in engineering, as well as his experience as a pilot, have helped him put together the critical pieces and, and to realize that we are clearly not on a spinning ball flying through the universe at millions of miles per hour. So the issue with this is, if we take this and we go back to the good old Wayback Machine, gotta love the Wayback Machine. Uh, 
There are 36 captures. Let's go to the beginning of 2018, January. Is it just really delayed, or I don't it... know. It's we're still showing the Inbiz or yeah, the Inbiz site that has nothing on it. No, wait, oh. it, let it catch up. There it is. Yeah, I was gonna say it's a Mac. It takes forever. Oh yeah, what the hell? PC Master Race. Shut up. <laughs> 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 so on here. Bob Nodell is a professional electronic engineer of 35 years with background in RF, terrestrial microwaves, satellite ground station, and computer systems. He is also an FCC licensed broadcast engineer, an amateur extra class ham radio operator, and a commercial instrumental MEL licensed pilot. Wait a minute. Isn't there oh. another pilot that we know? That's, that's not what it says here, but it says it here. And Interesting. Again, and again, this is public information that anyone can use. Oh, forgot there's one more. Where is that? And there's one more thing. Let's go to the FAA registry. My brother just got his ATP rating the other day. Search for Robert Nodell. Oh, wait. What? Oh. Wrong box. Um, Requiem for a Dream, he's actually answered that in one of his live streams where they did a balloon launch where he accidentally docks himself down to his computer's room that he's in his house. <laughs> <laughs> Dumbass. So, with the FAA Airman Registry, there are two Mo Bob Nodells. Robert Lawrence Nodell? We don't see it. How are you guys so far behind me? Because you have a Mac. Shut up. There we go. Now we see it. So, where was it? I believe this is him. Let me go back to the other one. One of these gentlemen was uh, certified in, like, the 50s. Yeah. So, this person became a commercial pilot in 1956. So, this clearly is not... Robert Middleton Nodell is not the guy we're talking about. How old is Bob? Uh, not in his 80s. So this is a <laughs> private pilot license in 2006. Nothing about commercial. Airplane Nothing single about... engine land. Nothing about multi-engine. Yeah. yeah. Or or or, or yeah. commercial. Yeah. Or commercial. Private pilot. So again, all public information. Nothing that is you know using special G Wiz back channels of anything. This is all absolute public information that anyone can do. And that was do kind you really of the purpose think of this that's stream. Going to matter. No, do you it's honestly not. think that's going to matter. I'll, the the rest the rest of the stuff that we've been showing has been public information, and they're still you know trying to submit uh, privacy complaints. Well, it doesn't matter. Not, I know. It, le legitimacy is not a question within the flat earther's head. It's, can I abuse the system in, in this way? Oh, I can? Then uh, f fuck me, let's do it. Yeah, generally, the purpose of this stream was to just show the hypocrisy and, and to, to see if they would actually strike. Yeah, I, th um, I think, you know, uh, uh, they... Uh, okay. Mike is currently in the process of imploding. And doing this is just going to make him come after you. I think it's absolutely pathetic on his part, but you do what you what you want want to do on your part. Yeah, you, you know, what, Red, I'm kind of fifty fifty on that because some of the stuff that he went after your channel for, I mirrored on mine, and the only thing I did was add mirror to the beginning of the title. Yeah, nothing. I wanted nothing uh, against my channel so far. Uh, he wanted to. Uh, I think he's going after people who uh, the most relevant or some shit like that. Yeah. Not to say that, that they are, uh, they are irrelevant, uh, 82, but uh, f go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and just in case Bob tries to say that, well, the FAA just hasn't updated my information yet, I just want to say that my brother's registration information on the same site, I'm not going to show it for obvious reasons, I'm not going to dox my own brother here, but it does show that his medical was updated in July. So pretty darn up to date there. 
Yep. And uh, also, I can confirm to the surprise of absolutely nobody uh, that it's been uh, 10 days and FE Core hasn't uh, filed uh, any sort of legal action against me to keep that uh, video down. So um, <laughs> if this shit were to keep going, my video should be reinstated by, oh, that would be great if it actually happens, Friday the 13th. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Which, by the way... We're going to have to have a, a celebration on Friday the 13th because, if you remember, Friday the 13th last year was when Jaronism got his ass kicked in that debate moderated by Sean Hufford. <laughs> so, yeah, it's P already P been a year. P Moore's is greeting you with his presence, by the way. Yeah, thanks, P. Banana and, one of, and one of the many socks. Yeah. So, unless Effie Core actually does something uh, legally against me, they're uh they're not gonna they're not gonna be able to keep that uh keep the video down <clears throat> in which case the video will be reinstated and the uh thumbnail that i use will also be reinstated and in order to get the video back off my channel they can't just file another uh copyright complaint they actually have to go through uh legal channels and uh all i gotta say effie core is uh clock is a ticking Gotta get, gotta get started. Listen, you gotta sue me. You gotta come after me legally, and that way, what will happen is uh, my video will stay off of YouTube. But then we go to court, and then it will be the case of not only did I make you my bitch on YouTube, but I also made you my bitch legally. I'd like to apologize for everybody. I had to remove the chat because we have a couple trolls in there that are trying to, to bait to make the video get demonetized or taken down by throwing racial slurs and derogatory information. So good on you, P-Mars. It's not going to work. Uh, yeah. I just, I just want to know, Patrick, what does your mother think of your behavior? <laughs> not even a... Anyways, enough on PMARS. He doesn't yeah. need the attention. No, nope. yeah, that's correct. So, what is the so, status then of the, the different strikes? Uh, as of right now, uh, the there are no privacy complaints on my channel because I just took down the video after I had everyone else mirror it. So now it's spreading like wildfire. So mission accomplished. That they, they don't have to stay on my channel. Not that they do anyways. So mm. who cares? Um, but the strike is uh there it is starting to tick down so they have until friday to get back to me on something when it comes to legal action um unfortunately they haven't done that yet gee i wonder why so they're gonna have to do something quickly otherwise that video is gonna be uh reinstated and when it does i'm gonna laugh <coughs> We'll have to do a celebratory hangout about that. We will. Which we'll probably status, have it on. Which is we'll probably have it on Friday the thirteenth. Uh, well, like I said earlier, um, Sly has been in correspondence with a guy named Carl at YouTube about the privacy strikes, but he worded something in a very, very bad way, and YouTube took it the wrong way. So they think that Sly is actually threatening legal action against YouTube. So it's been moved up to the legal department where they're going to have a chance to look at it and Sly will be able to talk to them and correct the bad choice of wording that he used for his response to Carl. <laughs> he, he literally left it off with, um, this has left me with no choice but to file legal action and left the sentence at that. Carl assumed he was talking about legal action against YouTube and not FE Core. So he, he gave himself some red tape unintentionally. Thank you to everyone in the chat for trying to combat the nonsense. And Copernicus Thinker, $2 super chat, because Red's in the house. Oh. <laughs> and I made you I made you money just by being here. <laughs> yeah, but it was only two dollars. You your price has dropped. Look, I, I made I make no excuses here. I'm a cheap date. <laughs> How many sock accounts does this idiot have of? Two uh, Mars P Mars well into the hundreds. At this point, Jesus. Last I uh, checked, it, there was about uh, about 125. Wow. See, he had uh, to do well, the side account because he couldn't. 
porn bomb people anymore. People got wise to his crap on that, so they don't invite him in. So now he just spams the chat to try to get the videos taken down through chat responses. Yeah, yeah. We uh we had a uh we had him on where he couldn't porn bomb me, and he <laughs> yeah. just tried to shout Beautiful. the n word over and over again. I'm like, dude, you do know that this is gonna be re-uploaded on my second channel channel where I just don't give a shit. <laughs> well, oh, it, it gets yeah. even better because it gets even better because once you kicked him out. Um, he went into the chat and started telling everybody to to report the stream for racial, racism. Racism, yeah. Even yes. though he was the one doing the racist slurs. Exactly. Oh, there's another one. Damn it, I can't even click on it fast enough. The chat's moving so fast. Hey, hey, uh, uh, BM. Yeah. Do yourself a favor. Yep. Slow mode, 30 seconds. Oh. So That, so way, that way the sock account can only post one at a time, and then boom, you got him. Where do I, where's that information? Ingest settings or control room? You, uh, okay, so here's what you do. Go to uh, live streaming. Yep, I'm there. Don't, don't time them out. Reds, ban the, ban the socks. Said hid. So, and then what you want to do is uh, you go over to the little gear where it says uh, top chat. Oh. And then you want to click on enable slow mode. Am I in the control room? Creator Studio, okay. stream now, go all the way over to top, to uh, the little gear where it says top chat or the chat box, click on the gear, enable slow mode, set it for 30 seconds. There we go, okay. I think I got it. Perfect! Enable slow mode. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to unhide that last song. I, I, I'm not even going to try to mod anymore because I just hit the wrong buttons and I do the wrong <laughs> thing and then... <laughs> This is becoming okay. a game now. Well, control. I can't. Yeah, we, we call it whack control. Yeah. Well, I can't help but notice that you still didn't enable slow mode. I swear I did. <laughs> I swear I did. He's yep. got to go into the actual event, the live event in his control, or in the uh, ingest, no, not ingestion, in, in the, the um, info and cards of the actual event. There we go. Who was that? Oh, that's Jay Brown. I haven't heard you talk all night. <laughs> Oh, you guys are covering it so well that it's just like, oh, I'm just going to sit here and work on things in the background. It's going to hang out. I just want to feel important and just be a part of the screen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got I got the soundboard. I can play this one. Interesting. There you go. We need to <laughs> We need that several times because I actually had to do a Jerry's impression. I suck at it. Yeah. I can't sound, I can't sound hey, like that much of a douchebag. Hey, hey, BM, I, st I, I can't help but notice that you still haven't enabled slow mode. Yeah, I'm trying to find it, damn it. I've never had to do this. <laughs> hey, BM? Yeah, I haven't uh, enabled slow, slow mode. Slow is mode. Still, yeah, it's, it's still not enabled. You might want to fix that. <laughs> fuck, where the fuck is it? It's hiding. It is! In plain sight. Probably. I could just turn off chats, but that kind of ruins the fun. No, no. No, don't do that. Hey, BM, I, I still can't help but notice that <laughs> you still have a Fuck you, Red. Right. <laughs> Wait a minute. Who invited him in here anyways? <laughs> I think Justin Frakes got caught friendly fire because he... He, he did. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, Justin Frakes, that, that was friendly fire. He was just typing slow mo very, very, sl very, very slowly. <laughs> Seriously, all right, Jay, fucking walk me through this. I can't find the damn thing. All right. Hey, BM, uh, you still haven't enabled slow mo. Oh, oh, okay, hang on. <laughs> Furball, Furball, are you in the live control room of the active event? Yes. All right. On the, up at the top of there, there should be a, a section that says info and settings. Yep. Click on that. Click it. Click and then it, under click, the click. advanced setting, I believe, is where the, the chat slow mode is. You believe? Yep. Yeah, Wait, be are, are you using it. the beta? No, I don't think so. Recording. No, it's not in there. And oh, it, wait. Oh, sh I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Uh, well, we know this, but... <laughs> Save change. He's a chief warrant officer. What do you expect? Fuck you. Hey! 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 There you go. Good job. Good job. There you go. It's a first you time for everything. It, you figured it out. Good hey, job. Hey, BM, I, finally, I noticed you finally figured out how to do slow mode. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
20 minutes later. <laughs> you did a thing. I did a thing. Hey, yeah. hey, hey, this is my first live stream with other people in it. I, I'm impressed with myself just for doing that on a Mac. Yeah, but you, you've seen the, the results of your screen sharing with a Mac, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when are you going to finally uh, dump that piece of garbage? Which, by the way, did you know that uh, Tim Cook, uh, CEO of Apple, is a flat earther? You should totally, uh, you know, <laughs> toss it over a cliff just, uh, just out of spite. Is the stream still going? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. For the page I'm on says it's offline. Uh oh. So okay. Furball doesn't have to share a happy meal with Red five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, BM for dumb fuck of the year nominee. Uh, uh, no. Uh, no. Nah. Not quite. Does no, it, it depends. Listen, he has a year, uh, or not quite a year. He has a few months to get rid of the Mac and get himself a Windows machine. If he doesn't, then he's then he's pos you know, possible dumb fuck of the year. How many days till you're back in the States? Seventy one, I'm not counting. <laughs> Gotta fool me. Uh, but he's got it down to the minute. I don't I don't have a flight yet. I won't get that for another couple weeks. <laughs> and then it'll be to the minute. Oh yeah, then it'll definitely be to the <laughs> minute. No, it'll be to the second. Uh, BM no, Furball. no, because you gotta give it a little bit of a leeway. BM Furball, good job. By the way, get rid of that fucking Mac. <laughs> I, I I am a flat earther when it comes to Macintosh computers. I just believe that they're better. Yeah, you're yeah, yeah, you're definitely yeah. flat earther in that respect. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, have you ever? Uh, would, would, BM, would you like to? I, would you like to disregard all the evidence? <laughs> Yeah, yes. I'm going to uh, I'm going to recommend you uh, a YouTube channel called uh, Lewis Rossman. Yes, yes. Okay. And I oh, want just, you just to just just binge watch it. Pick a random video and start there. <laughs> just 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 any video. I just, teach just MacBook bin components level logical board repair from for common sense. Holy shit, he's almost got a, a million uh, subs. Yeah, yeah. I just... Let, let's put it this way. This guy is making bank because Apple are douchebags. <laughs> yes. That yes, is the correct. biggest understatement I've ever heard. So basically, uh, Apple is shit and this dude is making money because they're shit. The, that's the, that, that is basically the entire premise of the, of the channel. I reject your reality and replace it with my own. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, I've been going for about an hour and forty or so. Uh, I suppose it's time to wrap it up now that the the game yeah. Whack a Troll is done. Yeah, Thank we you. don't we don't want the Mac to overheat. Oh, I'm surprised it's lasted <laughs> this long. Oh. Uh, hey. Actually, so uh, there is a good question from Spare Room Music: Is Dumb Fuck of the Year purely for flat Earth stuff or open out? to non-related bullshit such as Kyle. Oh, uh, Kyle, yes. go for it. T Kyle's on the list. K Kyle's on the list. See, Dumb Fuck of the Year is not just limited to Flat Earthers. Did... Don't, don't, I mean, uh, if you wanted they, to nominate... They've kind of dominated it. <laughs> they've dominated Well, of course, they're Flat Earthers. Uh, the fact <laughs> is that you need to, uh, you need to understand that Dumb fuck doesn't just refer to flat earthers. Dumb fuck also refers to climate change denialists, people who are anti-vaxxers, uh, people who think drinking actual fucking bleach is healthy. Uh, yeah, those, yeah, those those types of people. So, yeah. Chili juice. Chili juice. <laughs> you, know, you should probably Don't do... Go chase and water. We need to do categories, because there's got to be Flat Earth Dumb Fuck of the Year, Pseudoscience Dumb Fuck of the Year, and then Overall Dumb Fuck of the Year. Well, Anthony's going to get the try hard of the decade. Yeah. <laughs> he gets a yeah, he's going to get... Exactly. I mean, he, he is so consistent in his idiocy... But it's always a shame that someone always manages to just edge him out for the top prize. I heard he uh, likes edging. A a Anthony Liley has been trying so hard. And in fact, oh, last he year he was actually winning and then uh, Professor Dick. Yeah. No, it was only Professor Dick during the, the duration of the contest because I respect the guy. 
It's just he did a dick move and, and promoted Trigger Tits. <laughs> yes, Trigger Tits won. <sighs> Super chat from John Rapp. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much, John. Uh, Christopher uh, uh, Manabat, what's going on with the Non Sequitur show? Has Steve filed the lawsuit already? Kyle has been served. Ooh, oh, Kyle's already been. served on that, yes. Oh. Kyle has been served. The son of a bitch has until the end of this month to reply. Otherwise, automatic win. Yep. Court ordered. Yes. And you can see him right now, live, right now, on the Non Sequitur Show with none other than Mr. Atheist. Oh, go figure. Uh, Requiem for a Dream. Why is the FE logo tilted at 30 to three degrees <laughs> because that's the perfect angle <laughs> <laughs> uh so also there's there's quite a lot of uh quite a lot of awesomeness happening i just wanted to uh, say i'm at thirty two thousand nine hundred fifty three subs very close to thirty three thousand if that can happen exactly on friday the 13th i Ooh, will fucking oh, love my life be beautiful so, I will fucking love my life. Just saying. Comment from Spare Room Music. It bothers me that all of these other dumb fucks are trying to steal Riley's uh, crown again. He richly deserves the title. Oh, but that, that's the beauty of it, because I think he tries so hard because he wants to win it so he can like put it in a feather in his cap that we hate him that much. The dumb fuck of the year doesn't have anything to do with hate. It has to do with how stupid somebody is. Yeah. Yeah. Another super chat from the enabler-in-chief, Stringer News 1. Harassment is enabled. Justin Franks, nah, Riley deserves parent to parentally be the second place for Dumb Fuck of the Year. This just because, why... just just to let him know that he's always been second. Because oh, that'd be hilarious if you just reserve the second spot every year for Riley. <laughs> <laughs> As you're ranking everyone, it's one, three, four, and five. The, that's hey, listen. The fact is, is that we always leave it to a vote. Second place, it might be him, might not. The votes will speak for themselves. Oh, uh, Mark Bassier, mass unsub on the 12th, just to fuck with Red. <laughs> uh, That's it, it's official. I'm, un I'm, un I'm officially unsubbing from your channel, Red, on the 12th. I will do it. I will oh, oh I, see, I see how it is. Yeah. All you guys suck. <laughs> oh, all right, gentlemen, we'll wrap this up. Uh, parting words, uh, Mr. Rhetoric. Uh, yeah, I, I bet I, I bet we need to kind of end this quickly because the Mac is kind of on fire right now. So, uh, okay. yeah, uh, okay. don't mass on sub. Do the exact <laughs> opposite. Subscribe to my shit. See you later, guys. Fuck later, you, Red. FB Core. Thanks later, for coming Red. by, man. Ms. Huffard. Oh, please expect mass copyright and privacy complaints in three, two... <laughs> but, but but he didn't finish the countdown <laughs> uh another super chat from suck my spinning balls i hate flat earth with a passion everything about that to include the name is just outstanding all right jared parting words uh one sec i actually have a link that i would like to share with the chat because yes I had a late night last night, or you can call it this morning, but I think it was so beautifully worth it. For those of you who are not already subscribed, one, what's wrong with you? Two, go watch that video. It is the premiere of the show Logic and Reason, where Logical Troglodyte and Steaming Cup of Reason combat conspiracy theories in the appropriate manner by bringing on experts to actually talk about the subjects. And I think it's safe to say the audience didn't want us to stop. That was, we a, had to, yeah, that was I, I amazing with you on that. I, I watched the, I watched that um, this morning actually after the fact. Yeah, that was an amazing program. I, I love the format that it is purely intellectual based with people that have knowledge in the field. So if you are not subscribed to that, go for it. Uh, and if you're not subscribed to AT2 Productions, uh, every week we do a Veterans Talk Weekly over there, just a bunch of veterans bullshitting and swearing and telling war stories. And then Jared also has um, AT2 Moto, where he likes to go driving on his motorcycle and getting speeding tickets. Hey, hey it's only happened once. <laughs> yeah, how fast were you going? 
90 and a 35. Hey, go big or go home, right? That's true. That is true. <laughs> All right. Thanks for coming, Jared. Jay? Mr. Lurker well, in the corner? Well, I, I had work to do. What can I say? Not really. I was just messing with things for my football podcast. But Effie Corkin, well, who said it earlier in, in the stream chat? Hashtag fuck Effie Cor. Pretty much. And then Copernicus Thinker asks, can you give a 30-second summary of the latest uh, reference FE Core for those who missed that segment? Uh, FE Core are a bunch of idiots. They're still continuously striking, but none of the strikes have helped. Pretty much accurate. Astronomy Live, thank you very much for coming. It was nice to, to actually uh, talk to you. Uh, we've interacted in the chat a couple times. Uh, it was great to have you on here. Oh, thank you. It was, it was great to be on here. I was, I was looking forward to this uh, hangout. And I'm, uh, thank you for having me on because... It seems that uh, you know there is a way forward to defeat these false privacy strikes, uh, and you just have to make sure that YouTube is aware of where the information is coming from and that it's not private information, that it is actually stemming from their channel. So uh, my advice to anyone who encounters strikes like this, you know, write them an email along these lines. Be nice. Be cordial in the email to YouTube. Uh, and you should be victorious, and I hope very soon that Sly will be victorious over his similar false privacy strike. Yeah, definitely, and if anybody else out there is not subscribed to Astronomy Live, go over there. He's got some absolutely amazing footage uh, of all of the great work he does to include the, the rocket launches uh, down on the Cape. It, it's amazing work that you do with your scope. I am a extremely amateur uh, uh, astronomy guy. I've got a 16-inch Trust Dob telescope that I can't take pictures through but it's just amazing to look at and someday i would love to actually start taking pictures well yeah i mean that's a that's a fantastic scope i mean for perspective uh that's twice the diameter of my telescope and you, you guys can see what my scope's capable of so yeah 16 inch scope will show you a lot in high detail and i'm working on developing some software for free uh open source uh for things like satellite tracking right now we had some fun with that last night i did a stream showing various satellites uh, tracked with my software. So people can go check that out on my channel and go download my software from GitHub and try it out, hopefully, on their scopes. Of course, you'll need a, a motorized, computerized yep. uh, type telescope. But uh, my goal is to make software that makes it easy for anybody with no prior experience to track things like the space station and actually see things like the solar panels, the habitat sections, up close through their own telescopes in an automated fashion. So that's, that's my goal in life right now with my channel. So we're, we're getting close to that goal now. Yeah. That is a very admirable goal. Cool. Thanks for having me on. Yep. I'm going to sign off here. All right. Thanks. Thanks for coming in. Thank you everybody in the chat for joining. Thank you specifically to all my mods for squashing the stupid out there. Uh, hopefully this doesn't have any issues. Copernicus thinker, another $2 astronomy lives uh, last show ruled. Yeah, it did. He's got some great work over there, and he, he lays it out so you understand it. It's not that hard. The average person that has the right equipment can, can do what he's doing, uh, and that's, that's the goal of his channel, so that to open astronomy to the public, to everyone. So thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh, thankfully, this actually held together pretty well. Uh, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your weekend, day, morning, evening, whatever time it may be. And with that, take care.